five in three, oh God, two, one. Good morning, Galaxy. I'm Jim Heron. And I'm Carol Winston. And welcome, welcome to, to Galaxy, Galaxy News. News. So, Jim, what's happening in the galaxy on Orion's Belt, or as the Earthlings call it, the Milky Way today? Well, Carol, Millennium is establishing a trade system with oh, Mahalit. Sorry and... there, but uh, all the butterflies on planet Earth, they, they, they disintegrated and they're, they've become a dangerous dust. And humans who inhale this dust, they're, they're butterfly people thingies. Everybody knows that. And, our, and contact with any disorder people is not advised. Our scientists cannot quite tell whether this disease is contagious. Well, I guess it's good all the ER flings don't know we all exist. Uh, well, they know now, Jim, because the Martians sent ships to evacuate the remaining humans to Mars. And we have word that there's conflict breaking out between the refugee ER flings and the Martians. Oh, come on, Martians. What if the disease comes to Mars? Then it'll spread to other planets. Sometimes you just gotta let your neighbors die off. I mean, they can't even look at the solar system for crying out loud. I'm down, Jen. I've got a bad feeling about this. Okay. Uh, well, now we are going to constellation about the conflict between the refugee ER flames and the Martians. Constell? OMG, thank you so much, Carol. Hello, all. It's so wonderful to see my favorite fans out there. Make sure to stop by the Constell A. Sean Famous Shop later on. There's hats, t shirts, glow sticks, even little bags full of popcorn. Constell. Mm. Sorry. Hello, everyone. This is the one and only Constell A. Shun reporting from Mars on the conflict between Earth and Mars. Mars, despite recommendations from scientists, evacuated all remaining Earthlings. But our people have been taking over Earth and Mars, and an unusual fit of kindness decided to help them but it only spread the disease further. Now, not only Earthlings are getting infected, Martians as well. Even though they were the ones who brought the disease to Mars in the first place, Martians are becoming angry at the Earthlings for spreading the butter people disease on their home planet. Oh, look, an Earthling. This will be a rare opportunity interviewing an Earthling. You, hello there. Hi. Um... I'm beautiful. Aren't I? Uh, sure, I guess. I mean, how do you feel about the Butter People pandemic, the Martian and Earthling conflict? It's terrible. My brother's stuck at home with me and he's always in my space. My high schools make me do virtual school over Zoom, which sucks, and the malls are closed and I need a new top. This is unacceptable. And my BFF has it, and she's so annoying. Like, this only happens in movies. Interesting. Interesting. What's it like on Earth? Um, well, there's books and cars, and last year me and my family went on a cruise. And for entertainment and stuff, we have TVs, iPhones, and M&Ms. Oh, and don't forget the malls. You Earthlings like your initials, don't you? Ha! Well, you stay safe. Where can I get a cheeseburger around here? Well, folks, travel to Mars is not advised. Stay tuned for further updates on the Great Butter People Pandemic 2021. In the meantime, back to the studio. Oh, and remember, this is Constellation. Did you get that? C O N S E. And we'll be right back after a couple amazing commercials. Hi everyone, it's Arnold Clay, owner of Awesome Lobster Food. Have you ever heard of a fuel called Earthling Container Ships? They are the most awesomely delicious fuel ever. You can find this fuel in something called a s'more. Oh wait, it's called a s'more? Anyways, this store needs to be next to something called a gas station, aka the place where humans go up for a moving box with some sort of sticky liquid. 
don't eat the sticky liquid at gas stations. It does not taste good. Anyways, the better deal is come to our store, Austin Massive Foods, instead of going all the way to Earth to get Earth to make it. They have locations all over the galaxy, even on Mars. Awesome, awesome food is Earth Foods and Potato or get your Jeep hair up and do some online shopping at www.awesomeawesomefood.com. One bag of Earth and Potato Chips only costs two galactic points. There's a hot new deal. Buy two, get one free. That's pretty awesome, right? Thanks for listening to this commercial and please your message. Now must stay, everyone. Run out of toilet paper and other things to wipe your butt. The soft toilet paper will automatically clean their butt, so you won't have to clean your baby's butts too. The beautiful smell of the toilet paper will get rid of all those stinky fart odors from your butt. After you order some, it will come by instant mail, so you don't have to go get it again. Again, that's www.toiletpaperking.com. Please keep your butt safe this minute. And remember, no alien should endure what your butt is going through those years. Smells good, doesn't it? Man, these earthling potato chips taste great. Mm -hmm. Toilet paper does smell good. Hey, wait. Are we on? Oh, 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 we're on. Oh, um, um. Welcome back to Galaxy News. Now, we're going to tell the copper to talk about the spread of the butter people pandemic. Hi there. I'm Tilda Copper, reporting about the pandemic spreading across the galaxy. Scientists on Earth have said that this disease is spreading very fast. I'm here with Harper Brown, one of the aliens who is worried about this pandemic. What do you have to say about this, Harper? Hi, Tilda. I'm okay. Starfleet is letting me work from home. But me and my two blobs, or as Earthlings call them, dogs, are very scared about this pandemic and mad about it too. I also want to say, that if you are not infected with this disease, then please stay indoors, wash your hands, and use at least two gallons of hand sanitizer every week. Whatever. This is a very serious matter. And since I'm taking all the necessary precautions, I'm going to survive this. I doubt you'll make it to the end of this episode. What did you say, dear? Uh, nothing. As I was saying, Unfortunately, some of the humans had inhaled or brought small traces of this butterfly dust with them on these ships the Martians sent out. What? Why would they do that? Um, like I was saying, there was not enough room on Mars for all of the humans to stay, so the Martians used their ships and sent the humans to five different planets across the galaxy. A few days after the humans were sent to these different planets, they started acting weird. They eventually turned into butter people. These butter people are infecting intergalactic life forms all over the galaxy, and everyone around them is getting infected. If you come in contact with any of these butter people, you may have caught this disease. That's about all the time we have left for this story. Stay safe, and we hope you're doing well during this pandemic. Well, I have not been doing well during this pandemic. I definitely have been collecting a lot of toilet paper, but I'm still running out, and my masks stink. My house is definitely a mess, and I really need more soap and hand sanitizer, and I really need to go to the shop today, but everything is closed, and this never would have happened if we didn't bring the humans here in the first place. Um, okay. It appears I was right about not surviving. Well then, back to you at the studio. Thank you, Tilda. Hold on, we're just getting work that there's some sort of bad storm on Mars. What's going on? Let's go to meteorologist Abby Nabrenna, live from the crater field on Mars. Thank you, Jim. On Mars, there is a giant black butterfly swirling storm with butter people that is ripping chunks of clay and rocks and tossing them up in the atmosphere. It is approximately negative 1,280 degrees outside. <laughs> the storm seems to be caused by the giant murderous butter people pandemic. Let's go to Samantha Johnson, our meteorologist in the studio. Thanks, Abby. As we saw through this butter people pandemic, the whole galaxy has been getting colder and colder every day. On all the planets, the temperature has been dropping more and more per day. If these planets get too cold, then there will be a huge disaster in the galaxy. 
Now, let's get into our daily planet weather. On Mercury today, the weather is, and get ready for this, 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I hope you're holding up okay with this terrible cold weather. Abby, what's the status of Venus? Venus, there is another giant storm caused by the Butter People pandemic. The temperature will get down to about 70 degrees today, which is a huge drop from the 800 degrees it was yesterday. It will rain all around the planet for the first time in 500 years. Now to Samantha Johnson to talk about the weather on Jupiter. On Jupiter, there are ginormous blizzards throughout the entire planet. The weather is approximately negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, a whole 100 degrees colder. They are really suffering, and the Butter People pandemic has deeply impacted them. Jupiterians, if you're watching, hang in there! On Saturn, the weather is negative 600 degrees, and the wind speeds are over 2,000 miles per hour. So stay safe and don't get blown away! Tragically, on Uranus and Neptune, we were unable to get their exact temperature. All we know is that it is colder than negative 400 degrees. I hope you're doing all right. Well, that was a little dark there. Uh, we're now receiving reports that Butter People workers are protesting for equal pay and jobs at the capital of Saturn. Mm -hmm. We now will go live to one of our reporters who is interviewing one of the organizers of the protesters. Thank you, Carol, and hello, everyone. I am Sam Calypso reporting live from the capital city on Saturn. All over the galaxy, butter people have been protesting for equal pay for their jobs. Like here at the capital city on Saturn, this has been the second protest this week. So, Sam, how long have these protests been going on? Well, Jim, for months, these protests have been going on. The capital city on Saturn has done nothing in their power to change and or create new bills and laws for fair and equal pay. This has led to more protests and to new counter protests. But here with me now is Randy Smith, who has been a part of arranging these protests. Hello, Randy. Why are you protesting? Well, uh, because the capital only gives us hardworking butter people one galactic coin per day. I know, it's just one galactic coin. That is, that is only enough for a banana. Bananas suck. Bananas are not enough for our big tummies. Plus, bananas taste like apples. Apples suck, too. They should give us potato chips and toilet paper. And you, the annoying person who interrupted my amazing march to destroy the capital. Should the capital give us equal pay? Yes, yeah. Oh goodness me! I viewers at home, I I was I'm joking. I'm I, I'm a totally unbiased reporter here. Um, now back to the topic of today. So, um, Randy. How has the response from the Capitol impacted the organizing of these protests? Well, since the Capitol hasn't done anything productive of creating bills and laws related to equal pay, we still have been protesting. Also, we have gotten a lot more people marching and protesting the way we sound like Saturn sucks, or we shall give you bananas to eat for turkey. So, Randy, what are your thoughts on these counter-protests? Well, really, I just don't know what the counter-protests are protesting for. Really, I just don't see why. Like, what's the logic behind the Capitol not giving you potato chips and toilet paper? I, okay, so, Randy, what are your plans for the future? Well, we're going to stay here and keep on protesting until we never have to eat another banana again. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. 
And there you have it, folks. The Butter People plan to keep on protesting until the capital city on Saturn has created new bills and laws for fair and equal pay for their jobs. And bananas, I guess. Anyways, and until then, I am Sam Calypso reporting live from the capital city on Saturn. Now back to Carol and Jim in the studio. That guy talks too much. Like, what? What did you say? I, nothing, sir. I didn't say anything. Please. It- Thank you, Sam and Randy. Well, now we are going to have the intergalactic chaotic report. Oh, God. This is Winter Lolly Pooped, not. That's not my name. My God. Mm-hmm. Anyway, here's here to tell us about that. Intergalactic traffic. Oh, God. Hi, I'm Interoli Uptana, and I am here with your nightly intergalactic traffic report. The shipping lanes between Jupiter and Mercury are becoming jammed up with refugee ships from Earth, Mars, and other planets. This is delaying travel and delivery, so expect delays in anything traveling intergalactically. Fascinating. There is a meteor storm between Saturn and Neptune, which is expected to delay ships along that route for a few days. People on Tatooine have been victims to massive sandstorms, which have been destroying water storms. This is called massive water shortages throughout the galaxy, which has grounded Jupiter ships, which use water as fuel. Now on to local traffic. Pluto's capital. Sorry to interrupt, but we're going to bring it back to the studio. One more thing. There seems to be increased traffic on Earth due to the pandemic. The human moving boxes are jamming up along there. Cut it! Don't be so rude. Um, I mean, remember to check out www.galacticweather for every rotation.com. And this www. <laughs> who has an exclusive interview with the creator of this vaccine. Hi there, you're on. Sorry, sorry. One second. Thank you. Uh, this is Hydra Sharon, uh, and I'm here today with the report that billions of people and aliens have been dying to see. We are live interviewing the creator of this vaccine, as well as a Pluto advocate from the planet. Uh, wait, hold on. I know. Oh, God. What was it? I forgot. What? Seriously, you guys already forgot? Pluto, it's Pluto. Everyone, I guess everyone always pays attention to little things nowadays, but no one cares about Pluto. It's almost like we got demoted or something. It's almost, wow, Jupiter is so cool. Saturn's rings are amazing. Uranus is, you, you know what? Never mind. But, but it's never about Pluto. Okay. How about you tell us about the vaccine you made, Dr. Uh, what's his name again? Seriously, I can hear you. Please don't tell me you forgot my name. Of course I didn't forget your name, dude. My name is Joe, Dr. Joe. How hard is that to remember? It's three letters. It's even on the screen. Oh yeah, of course, Joe. Now tell us. How did you develop this miraculous vaccine over there on uh, your home planet? Okay, so, so basically, we formed particles of butterfly dust and observed the molecular compounds. And using this data, we... Sorry, sorry, one second. Shut up, Spot. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. 
So as, as, as I was saying, um, we know that this is no ordinary vaccine. This vaccine is actually part of a group. Are, are you falling asleep? You know what? This, this is... Whoops. Looks like time is up. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Bob from Neptune. What? No, 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 no. That... Well, that's enough from you, big guy. Back to you in the studio. That was a very interesting report. Congratulations to Dr. Jeffrey from Uranus for creating the vaccine. Now the vaccine is being dispersed to everybody in the galaxy, so with all we'll take some time to stay safe and keep wearing those masks. Thank you for watching, and tune in tomorrow for some more Galaxy, galaxy News! news.